Hello guys and girls, Roger back with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to spin up an EKS cluster and then install CloudWatch container insights in it. So for those of you who uh, don't know what is CloudWatch uh, container insights, um, if you have a Kubernetes cluster, uh, maybe you use Datadog or Prometheus or Grafana uh, to watch the metrics for CPU, memory and, and the other stuff. However, uh, CloudWatch Container Insights now can do all that uh, and it is part of fully managed CloudWatch service. Uh, so you can utilize the awesomeness of CloudWatch such as you can monitor, troubleshoot, alarm, fire Lambda, etc. And uh, you can utilize CloudWatch Logs Insights uh, to query and gain more insights from the logs. No third party software or sidecar installations required uh, since CloudWatch Container Insights is from AWS itself and it comes with uh, pre-created uh, dashboards and metrics. Um, also, uh, it has one-click install to um, make it convenient. So, uh, <laughs> one thing to note, uh, in case you guys have tried uh, spinning up EKS uh, from the console, might have faced a bunch of caveats. Um, so, do not spin up EKS console using root like generally we log into our AWS account using the root creds for our personal uses. Uh, if you spin up EKS cluster from console, uh, then kubectl, uh, which is the command line utility uh, to run commands in your Kubernetes cluster, um, it uses CLI, you cannot do that through a console, right? Uh, so basically you will need root accounts, access ID and the secret access ID um, to, to run the kubectl and uh, that's not recommended at all to create an access ID and secret access ID for the root. So you're probably thinking, okay, so <laughs> I'm just going to create a IAM user and still use console uh, to spin up uh, EKS cluster. You could do that. However, uh, it will involve a couple of extra steps. So if you use uh, the console to spin up EKS, uh, you have to create a couple of IAM roles, uh, one for the EKS worker node, another for the cluster uh, before you uh, spin up the EKS. So you have to run a couple of cloud formations uh, to do that. And then uh, if you do that, then it's okay. But remember to run kubectl, you have to use CLI. Uh, you have to get that IAM user that you used uh, in the console to, you have to use that IAM user secret ID and secret access ID uh, to log into CLI. So the easiest path we, that I am using here, and also I recommend you to do this as well, uh, use AWS CLI plus EKSCTL to spin up cluster. EKSCTL is a simple command line utility uh, for creating and managing Kubernetes clusters on Amazon EKS. So when you run uh, EKSCTL, to spin up the cluster, all the IAM roles that needed for the cluster, for the worker groups, are automatically created as part of the EKSCTL command. Uh, so you don't have to go and do those uh, overhead stuff. And since you are already in the CLI, uh, you can easily run kubectl and all the stuff. And these are all command based, uh, so it can be replicated in DevOps tool, and of course EKSCTL is cool beans. Okay, so the steps are as follows. Uh, first, we are going to install EKSCTL and then uh, install kubectl and then we are going to spin up EKS cluster using EKSCTL and we are gonna access cluster using kubectl. Uh, so number five is the pro tip. Uh, you have to tweak the node role uh, to include log write access. Uh, by default, it doesn't come uh, with the policy that allows it to write to uh, CloudWatch Container Insights. Uh, so we're going to change that. And then we are going to install Container Insights using a single command. And number seven is uh, Profit. Uh, so I'm going to give you the link how to install EKSCTL and kubectl. Okay, so this is the page. Uh, so basically, uh, you have to install the latest AWS CLI. I assume you guys already have AWS CLI and with the secret key and the secret access key all set up. Um, if not, you can follow this page and then you can install EKSCTL. Uh, so I actually used my Windows machine to record this. 
so I use chocolatey to do this. Uh, pretty straightforward, you just follow this and should be okay. Uh, next, so next is installing kubectl. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can just curl for Kubernetes 1.14. So this is the version, this is the um, latest version available in EKS. Uh, so that's what I used and I recommend you to use the same. In case you are using Linux or Mac, uh, you can use appropriate commands. Okay, once everything is installed, uh, you can uh, validate it by typing ekstl version and you should get something back. Okay, the next, uh, we are going to run the ekstl command uh, to spin up the cluster. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, it says, hey, create the cluster. The cluster name will be prod. Kubernetes version is 1.14, region is this, uh, node group name is standard workers. Uh, so node group is basically the worker nodes, right? Uh, where the pods will reside. Uh, node type T3 medium, and then <clears throat> desired node is three, minimum one, max four. And if you want to do SSH access to the worker nodes, uh, you give a key. Okay, so this is the command I ran. Uh, so I changed a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, the node type. Uh, I change it from T3 medium to T3 micro uh, because I don't want to pay for the T3 medium. And then the number of nodes I change to minimum one and maximum two. And for this, I really don't need to SSH into the worker nodes, so I remove the uh, SSH part. Uh, so if you run this, uh, so this will take a little bit of time uh, so on the back end, it's really uh, spinning up two different CloudFormation stacks, uh, one for the cluster and another for the worker groups. Uh, so I'm gonna pause the video and come back uh, once the cluster is up and running. Okay, seems like uh, our cluster is uh, up and running. So uh, let's run a couple of other commands to validate that. Okay, so if we run kubectl uh, get service, uh, if everything is fine and set up, uh, it should give us an output. It gives us the cluster IP and a couple of other things. We can also uh, come to the console and see under Amazon EKS clusters, we have our clusters running. Uh, if we click it, it's gonna show all the stuff along with the node group, which are the worker groups and everything is good. Okay, so we have done uh, step one, two, three, and four. Uh, so now let's take a look at step five and uh, tweak the node role. So let's get into console. And if I go to my EC2 uh, console, you can see these two EC2s are running. Uh, so these are the two nodes. Uh, if you click the tags, uh, you can see that the EKS cluster name is the test EKS. That's the one that we spun up using the EKS CTL commands. Okay, and it's running with uh, the role of uh, this this role. If I click this, right click, open link in new tab. So before the nodes can start sending uh, logs to CloudWatch, uh, one thing to note that uh, this is the IAM role that gets created from the ekstl command, uh, but it doesn't have the CloudWatch uh, logs policy, right? Um, so let's do this. Let's attach policies and select CloudWatch. Okay, this CloudWatch logs full access. Okay, click attach policy. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and start installing some stuff in our EKS cluster. So I'm just following the command given in this uh, quick start setup for container insights on uh, EKS. So I'm gonna give the link to this page so I have the command handy, so I'm just gonna run this. Okay, so the command uh, ran fine. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is uh, go to CloudWatch and we should see our container insights for that EKS cluster. Okay, so if we go to CloudWatch, okay, now click this arrow by the overview. And at this point, you should see uh, container insights. So click that. Uh, so by default, it's showing the EKS clusters, uh, but you can see uh, there are other options as well outside of EKS. 
So under EKS, you can see there are three broad uh, range of groupings available. One is EKS clusters, EKS nodes, and EKS services. Uh, so if you click EKS clusters, by default, uh, we have only one uh, cluster, test EKS. So it shows the CPU utilization, memory, and all these metrics. It says all nodes okay, average CPU, average memory, etc. Uh, let's click down and click EKS nodes. So EKS nodes are basically the EC2. Uh, so you can see that these are the two EC2s uh, that we have running. Okay, so it shows these metrics. And then finally, uh, we have these EKS services for CPU uh, and a bunch of other uh, services. And last thing, like if you want to see the actual uh, logs, uh, you can go to uh, log groups and uh, look out for container insights. Uh, so here we go, AWS slash container insights. So click this and you will see the two nodes that we have. Uh, click one of those, uh, click text, and then you can see the logs are flowing through. Okay, so uh, CloudWatch Container Insights is all set up and running. Okay, so there's one more thing to do. Um, I want to delete the cluster as well using EKSCTL. However, before we run the EKSCTL delete cluster command, uh, come to the role uh, for the node uh, where we added the CloudWatch logs and just remove it before uh, running the um, delete cluster command. Uh, else it's going to fail because it drifted from the actual CloudFormation stack. Okay, after uh, that policy is detached, uh, you can come back to CLI and run EKSCTL delete cluster and then the name of your cluster and uh, it should be deleted. All right, guys and girls, uh, that is the video. If you are liking the content in my channel, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.